Yeah, I've got to so say, I, this I, app is already way more stable than Horizons was when I was in there. Oh, dude. <laughs> fucking Horizon. Oh, my I, God. I, Everyone just needs to, to bite the bullet and just move to Neos. <laughs> it's 100% true. I did a stand-up show on Horizons last night, and they had to, like, create a new room because it was lagging too much because it got full. So then all these oh, people wow. were sitting in the room, and we had moved to a, a different instance of it, and they were all just waiting for the show to start. And oh, no. <laughs> like, it was just... A phantom room. <laughs> oh no! And then the second room filled so up with sad. other people, and they're like, "Eh, sorry." Oh, oh no. man, bummer. Man, I feel like in Neos, comedy could be completely revolutionized with all the props and all the crazy yeah. stuff that happens in there. Like, oh imagine yeah, imagine the things that you could pull off in there. Like, imagine, <laughs> oh. imagine like a carrot top like skit. I was about like, to say the carrot top of VR is what we need. Yeah. <laughs> oh, totally, man! Totally, you could do unbelievable things in there. Yeah, you during your last I don't have steroids. <laughs> <laughs> during your last podcast, Skiva, um, when we I was in there, I actually went to their Patreon and back. Um, oh, know, nice, so. nice, cool, dude! That's awesome. That oh yeah, awesome. Yeah, their crypto went down a little bit, but uh, it kind of went a little. I don't know. It's just kind of like it's kind of all over the place right now. It went like. Up like a rocket from like thirty three cents um, in NCR to like nine bucks, and then and then dove back down a little bit. I think it's sitting at like five right now or something. That's not but, bad. Uh, yeah, but from thirty three cents, like it's insane. <laughs> That's it. That is insane. It's insane. Yeah, I'm really interested to see where that all goes. That seems Me to be too. the I new just... like rush in VR is like. Uh, crypto and NFT integration and things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for reals. I really hope those guys make it, man, because it's my favorite place to be. I just love hanging out in there. I, I, it's I awesome. Have more fun in there than 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 most games. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I wanna yeah. I wanna do another video on it soon. I haven't been <laughs> on in a little bit. Hop in with me, man. Let's do some shit in there. Dude, let's yeah, do it. Yeah. We had to take Wookie in there yet. He hasn't been, in there, been yet. in there yet. Oh, yeah, that's right, dude. You totally fucking bailed on us last time we went in there. Okay. <laughs> I did? No. Yeah, you're like, you're like, I'm too good for, for you guys. I remember you saying <laughs> that. <laughs> kid. I think you said that. Hey, yeah, you remember. You were there. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't even there, but I can feel that it was true. <laughs> Am I in a you coma? Came, did didn't I you come in? You came in with us, right? <laughs> yep. Yeah. It was, was like me, Pac you, and birthday? Justin, and, and was and Johnny, Johnny in there? Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. And yeah. Uh, even Robert. Actually, Johnny wasn't in there. It was Robert, yeah. And oh, wife. okay. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. yep. Oh, I shit. think I remember you guys Robert. talking about this, but I didn't even know what was going on. It was a random oh. night. Like, hey, who's around? And we just jumped in. Oh, before I was you didn't on even Twitter, know? That's pretty recent, too. Yeah, it was. Oh, it was, you weren't on Twitter. Oh, it was like three days after. Uh, Got to get I, on that Twitter. Yeah. I just yeah. made one. I'm like, hey, guys. Check out Dude, Twitter is or... everything, bro. It is the best networking tool on the planet right now. Yeah, I'm yeah, finally starting definitely. to use it more because I was so bad with it. It's so good, man. Like, it's just, it's so great to like just be able to talk to anybody. Do you know what I mean? And like, yeah, kinda build yeah, relationships these little interactions. With people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then those little interactions can turn into larger interactions and turn into yeah, exactly. opportunities. You know, so it's really it's good. I really like it. That's very true. Yeah. You do it better than most people I know. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> you like the VR yeah. Twitter king. <laughs> I, I yell on it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that was my first impression of you. Like, damn, he hates Facebook. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I really. I, people just need to know, man. You know, that's my main <laughs> thing. Like. We need more like, people shouting will, in the space. But yeah, for real. Because like, if you don't like something, it doesn't mean you have to abandon it. But you just have to make the company know you don't like it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, and there's there's room for improvement for the users yeah. who are going to be the ones using it. How do you how hmm? do you tell them that? Like, yeah, they, you tell them you don't like yeah. it, you don't change it. Be like, you don't like. And you tag you them weird pants, crazy hashtags, and you get people. 
stirred up and you get a bunch of people yelling about it and then then things change you know if you just let it if you just let things be then a company will do whatever they know they can get away with but uh if yeah enough people, you know, yeah I'm, I'm hoping that that same logic works for youtube you see all the issues they're I, having with their copyright system right now no no, what's going on? They're, they're getting called out like by everybody who's big on the platform because like I think it's because of Toei Animation started this where they just started like blanket like copyright striking and taking down like anybody who used any anime footage even if it was like transformative or like a review or something. They just copyright uh, like whole channels and this guy who had like 700 subs had like almost every video he had ever made taken down by by <gasps> toy animation oh my falsely. god no but it's because the appeal process is so broken he yeah. literally did the math on stream and he's like the only way i could get all of these reversed is if it, i spent like 60 years appealing every single <laughs> video and going through the whole process for it because you have to take each oh one god. to court oh no way and that's why there's these companies who are just like making false copyright claims on everything because youtube won't do anything about it yeah and then they get the revenue any ad revenue and all that stuff absolutely that's crazy yeah man. we need a competitor youtube needs a competitor bad it does Fucking and then pewdiepie bad. showed that there was a company who claimed ownership over a song that he wrote and produced and owned and the name of the company literally had in parentheses like on behalf of pewdiepie and they copyright struck his own video of that song <gasps> Whoa. And stole all the revenue of it. He's like, how can oh somebody copyright god. strike me on behalf of myself? Oh my god. Like, it's just blatantly so illegal. It's crazy because they have enough money to to put enough manpower behind this to have actual people doing things, but they don't give a shit. Yeah, they yeah. won't. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. But we need competition. Competition is everything. It drives uh, innovation. It, uh, you know, makes things better all around. So we got to get we get some more competition going. Oh yeah. Yeah. Dude, I see ready to screenshots the over here. What's that? You guys ready to start this bad boy? <laughs> oh yeah. Are you doing a show in here or is this an after party? Yeah. This is a show we're gonna start. Okay. Okay, so here's the deal. So last time I had no idea that I was <laughs> that I just stomped up on stage during a show. <laughs> So I'm gonna hang out back here. Fine. No, no, I'm just, no. I'm just gonna listen. No, no, I, I don't want to like. We're gonna start headbanging. Like... It's fine. Yeah, yeah no, I, I demand headbanging. Like watching. <laughs> well, the, so the camera <laughs> when we go live is right above my second head here, right where my oh, name okay. is. So you gotta okay, get in front cool. of that. In front of that headband. In front of that. <laughs> you can't get right in that. front. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm here to watch and hang out. Um, yeah, I uh, I don't want to like fucking steal anyone's shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, pretty laid back. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, there he goes. Oops. <laughs> Dude, this game. Wow. This is the best looking alpha game and the best feeling alpha game I have ever. It's underwater awesome. and it is amazing. It is so good. It is Which so game is this? Good. I don't think I've tried Hubris. it. Hubris? Oh, I've heard. Holy yeah, I've been hearing shit. really good things. It's so good. So I've got to get in on that. So it's yeah, a dude. Saturday. We have these guys on at 7 a.m. Central. And then also Saturday, we have the Ruins Megas teams at 6 p.m. Central. So. Oh, I haven't I'm seen excited to try that like out. That. They just oh, sent wait. me a code, I think. Oh, nice. they asked me if I wanted to play this, and I was like, "Oh, it's not really my kind of game." But thank, thank you. It's it amazing. What I'm into. Gorgeous. On the quest, it's it's insanely good. Like wow, detail and the atmosphere, and yeah, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> so yeah, don't worry about button in or anything, because I'm gonna say you're in the audience anyway, and all that fun stuff. <laughs> okay, you all have right. to you have to represent. <laughs> sit on my well, lap. I just feel I I felt so messed up last time. I just thought we were all chilling, and then it ended up being your show. And I was like, "Oh my god!" I literally <laughs> showed up at their show, walked up on stage, and and was like, "Yo, I'm here." That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that was an accident. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
It was totally fun, though. So it was perfect. Yeah, it was super. That's fun. awesome. But... <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> okay, so I'll just it's do the you. intro and start from there. Just why, FYI, since the UI's messed up, don't click on anybody because I can't get rid of this panel. Yeah. With the business. Oh stuff. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to the VR Verdict Podcast, Episode One Hundred and Two. Our weekly show where we talk about everything VR. I am PJ. Wookie. We're here talking to Mr. Obscure Nerd VR himself. Yes. Glad to be here. <laughs> Thanks for I don't know if you, if you meant to walk straight up to the camera, but it looked like you were doing an opening monologue. I was sitting here the whole time. <laughs> but... Like all the way up there. Yeah, I was, so excited. I was excited for it. It was Conan-esque. Get ready. Yeah. Get You're ready. Right. You were like, you know, did the hand motions to me and then hand motions to Obscure here. And he... <laughs> <laughs> I hope the camera saw it. <laughs> Shout out to Steva, who's laughing. in our audience. Hey, what's up, guys? You yeah, hear me Steve laughing up. a lot because the UI is broken and I can't mute myself. So I'm sure you'll hear me chuckling. Back For here. best part of the immersion. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, yeah, thanks for joining us, man. It's good to have you. Um, so why don't you tell us a little about, about yourself and how you got your name? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so I'm a, I'm a stand-up comedian and I've been a VR enthusiast sort of creating content in various ways since like 2016 now. Um, but um, yeah, recently I sort of kicked off my YouTube channel, Obscure Nerd VR, um, when I started doing VR stand-up comedy shows during the pandemic because there was no other way to do comedy. It was that or Zoom. <laughs> and this this beats Zoom by a, 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 a thousand miles, I'll just say it. <laughs> <laughs> And the second I tried that, I knew, like, this is a whole new platform for comedy that really isn't being explored by, you know, maybe a handful of people. And, um, you know, for comedy and all sorts of entertainment where you're using the games as sort of a medium to create new stories and new, you know, bits and things like that. So I just became wrapped up in that and figuring out ways to create new moments of, of comedy or new moments of uh uncomfortableness that's enjoyable <laughs> in vr that's what i do i was i saw some of your stand-up clips a, a while back but i was looking at some of your videos yesterday and today and i love the one where you're on the soccer field and someone comes in you're like hey well this is awkward and then you go into the other room yep. and there's some some vr sex going on and that's pretty good <laughs> immediately <laughs> i try to capture the real moments you know yeah I think a lot of people sanitize VR, and one of the things that makes it interesting is how like diverse the community and those experiences are that you just sort of stumble into. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, bring your kids into VR. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> don't bring your kids to VR chat, at least. <laughs> or the adults sometimes. Yeah. But yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had some interesting moments where I'll just go into VR chat and the whole video is like, I'm just going to go up and tell people that I'm a dentist and I was the toothbrush avatar. And you get like the most insane interactions. <laughs> people try to put you in their mouth? Or, yeah, 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 people are like, check, take a look. Let's do a, take a look at my molars. And I'm like, I don't think your avatar has the same molars as you do. <laughs> That's how real VR is, though. <laughs> it's true. Yes. And they're like, oh, yeah, let, get up close. Tell me. <laughs> You know, it's funny because, like, even if it's clear that you're doing, like, a bit or a character, people are just so easy to, like, roll along with it with the fun because it's just, it's so immersive that they just want to, it's like an infinite game of improv, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It was um, a little off topic, but just to show, like, anyone watching or listening, the power of VR, there was a gentleman his first time in the Spatial Ape app today and is having audio issues. <laughs> And he could he could hear everyone, but he, he couldn't talk. And just from being in VR, like you could see the frustration because this went on for like twenty minutes. So I was like <laughs> trying to help him and help him, and we finally got it working. And he was so thankful and everything. But it was like it was just the best example of VR. Like I could tell what he was feeling without him saying anything. It was insane. <laughs> oh. so. I love that. <laughs> yeah, you see the hands throw. You know, like point Italian. for a while and then go like this. It's like you could tell he just tried something that didn't work. 
you know, when you <laughs> see their hands dangle down and they're like typing on the keyboard. Or yeah. to, you know. <laughs> he's Googling. <laughs> he's, he's waking. He's doing... So in VR, um, like, where do you do a lot of, like, some of the stand-up and, and things like that? Like, how can people find your catch a show or? Yeah, so I do most of my shows with um, a company called Failed to Render Comedy. They've been running VR stand-up shows for, like, over a year now, um, mainly in alt space. So um, I think just because the event hosting tools in alt space are just sort of the easiest and most intuitive to work with for event planners, um, at least from what I've seen. But, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm actually doing a show tomorrow, and I usually do it every Friday or every other Friday at 7 p.m., Pacific time. Um, I had to do the dramatic point. Specific <laughs> time. That's Pacific. Like the That's ocean. Specific. <laughs> yeah. Specifically. It's, it's specifically at 7 p.m. <laughs> and, um, but yesterday, actually, we just did our, our, the first show that I had done with them in um, Horizons in the beta right before it launched today, which was a really interesting experience. <laughs> Um, mainly because it was just Horizons. It's so interesting because there were certain aspects that just felt a lot more visceral. I think they definitely put a lot of time into building the look of the platform and sort of the UI. And it was amazing until 15 or 16 people loaded into the map. And then it became like Block City. Mm. Where like everyone was like digitizing and I was just teleporting Right after I, I'm glad this happened after my set, but right when I finished my set, I got off stage and so I was like, great set. And then the whole game just froze and crashed my headset. <laughs> That's a VR mic drop. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Break no your headset. Follow. Gotta buy a new one. Yeah. Meta. I've, I've seen that happen to people on stage too. They'll be in the middle of a joke and their head will just like go up and start spinning. <laughs> and you're like, either this guy just disconnected or his neck is repeatedly breaking itself. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody said Beetlejuice three times and he just went nuts. Yeah. <laughs> it's his trigger <laughs> word in VR. <laughs> but um yeah, it's it's been it's it's a lot of fun. Like the coolest thing about VR stand up is that and this is what I found interesting in Horizons, because I think it was the first time a lot of these Horizons players had experienced it at all. And I do a lot of crowd work, which is why I love doing it in VR because you know, like, let's say in alt space, someone will, like, make a portal to a different world in the middle of my set. I'll be like, you know you're bombing when somebody's literally leaving to go to a different dimension in the middle of the joke. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, you just, it just creates back, this like, visceral moment. Yeah. No refunds, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, one time someone heckled me, and they actually had a pretty funny joke. And, uh... My response is I just sat there and I said, yeah. And then they just disappeared. And I was like, I couldn't come up with a comeback. I just banned them. They're banned for life. It was funny. <laughs> they can never come back. <laughs> and it's just like these great little moments that everyone in the room can immediately connect to because you know that it's specific to what's happening in the environment you're in. Make like a big squeaky hammer, hit them and ban them with it. Yeah, that's what we need. We need <laughs> fun ban old. tools. Squeak. <laughs> yeah, like a throwing knife, a band knife. Someone's like way in the back. You just go. Phew. He's out. <laughs> Do you normally get a, a decent crowd in in the space and kind of always rift off them then? Or is there some nights where there's just like you and one guy and you're, it's awkward? <laughs> it's It's usually a big crowd. Luckily, it's like an open world. And um, at least in alt space, they've, you know, been working with the alt space team for a long time. So it's like one of the promoted worlds on the main page. Awesome. Um, so honestly, better than my live shows. You'll get like the capacity most of the time. I think the biggest show I did, there was over 100 people across several different instances where they had my avatar being projected to like four different clubs that were all full at the same time. Hmm. Definitely want to catch cool. one of those. Yeah. How often do you do them? I usually do it like once a week, maybe once every other week now, um, just because I've been recording so much recently and just been busy. It sounds like fun. I have not been all up on the uh, original Metaverse before the Meta Switch apps. I've only been in uh, 
VR chat once, so that was it. I haven't been in Neos he, or anything like that. So. Oh, Neos is is really wild. I think that's going to be the next one that I really want to explore a lot. Just because, like, the developer tools, like, I do 3D modeling, like, just freelance and just for fun. Um, And the first time I went to Neos, I saw, like, oh, import model. And I was like, this can't be this easy. And I clicked on it, <laughs> opened my folder right there. I clicked on my model and immediately materialized in front of me with all the materials I made. I didn't have to do anything. Awesome. And you could... Yeah, and like uh, imagine what that can do for game development. Like, hey, want to take an inspection of the model we finished? You know, you can enlarge it, see what it looks like when you hold it. It's yeah. wild. We could, yeah, we could. You, I, a simple thing, but like asset production. You know, we could be game designers and just bringing in all the five hundred guns and you're like, I hate that one, and just chuck it across the room. And yeah, exactly. Shit. <laughs> you can have a yes or no pile. Like these are the ones we'll put in the game. These are the trash. <laughs> On separate continents and be fun. That would be fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was funny. Like you mentioned horizons, and I was in, I've been in there since they launched the alpha or beta or whatever it is. I've been in there like three times, and I haven't had any fun in there at all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like uh, that's that's rough. <laughs> it's um. I. Th oh, sorry. Uh, what were you saying? I was just gonna go the whole the whole Facebook thing right there. One of the girls oh, I yeah. work with doesn't know anything about vr like two of two people in my group out of the three of us we have vr headsets so we talk about it sometimes it had like no idea what we're talking about it doesn't really care and then the other day she started talking about that weird commercial with like the the tiger eating the the wildebeest thing and she was just talking i didn't know what she was talking about she didn't know to call it meta or facebook or anything she was just saying like i like couldn't go to sleep after i watched this commercial for this thing and she just kept doing it and she was like afraid like yeah she was like my kids were scared of it and everything we watched this and we were just all looking at each other we didn't even change the channel we were so creeped out yeah I was like, what was she turned out it was that i'm like oh yeah <laughs> run away from that sorry yeah, run away. i don't know if it'll ever look like that it's amb it's an ambitious uh you know thought um but yeah that i think that commercial was like so like it's trying to predict what it's going to be so far down the line that it is sort of foreign and scary. We're like, is this what they're doing now? It's like, no, it's not not now. We want to talk about what we're doing now. We want to talk about yeah. what we're going to be doing. Yeah, exactly. Honestly. Why excite you about the products you can experience today when you could think about 20 years from now? And get creeped out and, not, and lose a night's sleep because you have nightmares or whatever's going to happen to that poor family. Exactly. And I have people, like I was just in a conversation today where someone's like, oh, I just don't think VR is there yet. And I was like, have you tried a VR headset? And they're like, well, I did like five years ago, and it's not there yet. And I was like, you have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. <laughs> and I think that's what a lot of people who haven't given it the chance to really see how far it's come so quickly are doing. Oh, and they're yeah. like, well, I look at the meta thing, and they say it's like a 10-year plan, so it's probably going to be that long before it's interesting. I'm like, don't listen to what Facebook wants you to think, you know? Yeah, they Big companies just don't know how to market. Facebook sometimes reminds me of Microsoft because I still have a Surface Pro 2 tablet from like 2015. Fuck, I oh, love yeah. that thing. But then the marketing after that one, like that was the best one, I think. And the marketing came out and everyone's like, there's colorful thing. Oh, they're all in a row and they're colorful on the table and people are dancing in business clothes. And they didn't show you how <laughs> cool the fucking tablet is. And it's like, now no one's going to buy it. And then I don't know if anybody <laughs> ever bought Surface again. Like, you idiots. Yep. It feels just like that. <laughs> Like, nobody knows what the hell you're talking about with a wildebeest getting eaten by a tiger, and then you're just, fuck that shit. <laughs> like, you'll Frustrated. get it. <laughs> it's Ready Player One, I don't know. <laughs> and, like, but then, recently it happened on, on um, Twitter where there was, like, number one on trending was, like, this couple got married in the metaverse. Here's a peek at the future. And everyone saw that, and immediately, even the, the article was talking about Facebook, like, oh, yeah, this is what the metaverse is. And the app they got married in was built in, like, 1999. It was, like, one of these <laughs> old Second Life era apps that has a VR port now. And it was, because my girlfriend showed me that, and it showed, like, against a photo of somebody getting married in Second Life 15 years ago, and it's, like, all this weirdly high-res, you know, like, the themes didn't fit. It's yeah, like, it's... That's, everyone thinks that's the metaverse now? That's the... Yeah, they're just describing like any avatar based social app as being like, oh, that's Facebook's metaverse, you know, and, and it's just confusing <laughs> a lot of people. Oh, that's gonna be 
Yeah, it's 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 tough when it's like a term that was used synonymously for like everything in this space, and now all mm -hmm. of a sudden, all these things that have been connecting themselves to the term metaverse and the concept of metaverse, so like everyone just thinks that we're Facebook now. Yeah, it's just confusing well, everyone. I think that's what Facebook wanted, but then it's like somebody saying our company is called Cars now. It's like, was that the vehicles or the movies? Or like, we're cars. Yeah. <laughs> You're talking talking animated cars or what? <laughs> cars, Matchbox. So cars. how how did you yeah. originally like get into VR and and all that? How how did you enter the space? Yeah, so I was like a big in the Half Life Two modding days. That was my my prime in my life in middle school. Um, and I was a three D modeler. I loved the modding <laughs> community and like the whole idea of creating content. Um, that people can download and play and interact with each other and build a community around. And then honestly, it was 2015, 2016, I saw one of Nathie's videos, um, which was the first time I had seen modern VR. And immediately the next day, I was like, I'm ordering an HTC Vive and also a new computer so I can run that Vive. <laughs> and I'm just getting in on this because it, it just looked so cool. Like, I've I've always been into, like, immersive ways of playing games there used to be this old thing called the falcon i don't know if anyone's heard of that i haven't seen super that it was a super obscure peripheral where it's basically like a force feedback like ball that was attached to like um a bunch of like fiber netting type of things so you could get attachments for it and like push your hand forward like on this like sort of fiber attachment and it would stop when your hand in the game would touch things so like you mm -hmm. could move your hand around surfaces and feel it as it hit it. Oh, wow. Yeah, and like you could play shooter games and have like a gun attachment, and every time you shot like in Half Life Two, like the gun would give you recoil. Hmm. And so, yeah, I was like, it, and this was in like 2009, and so the minute I saw VR, it like brought me back to when I had that and was like obsessed with that thing, and I was like, this is going to be the next, the next wave of like immersive you know, ways to, to interact with just online experiences. Oh, awesome. I've never heard of that. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to send a link. No one, I think I'm the only person who was, who bought one, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's our fault. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's you. <laughs> Didn't know. <laughs> Yeah, and, like, I was even into, like, back when, like, 3D flat screening was a thing. Um, I remember I was at, like, a conference where they put basically the red and, you know, blue glasses on, and it would, like, you'd play World of Warcraft, but it would be, like, in layers coming out at you. Yeah. And so I just saw so this is the next evolution of that. Did you say something? <laughs> so that, that, that sounds like fun. Stereoscopic 3D. Even if yeah, yeah, and it worked so well. Yeah, that's so I, I'm a one of the few people that really like 3D movies that I know of. Um, so mm -hmm. my 3D TV, like, I was so convinced it was the future because I have like two sets of glasses, and you could play like an Xbox game, and you could play split screen on the entire screen, and each person that wore the different glasses would only see their screen. The it fucking blew my thing. mind. I was like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, and then yeah. it never went anywhere. And I'm like, what the hell is wrong with people? Like, this is the coolest thing. <laughs> I feel like if, like, local co-op had still remained as popular as it used to be, that would be, like, super implemented now for, like, competitive mm -hmm. games. I was thinking yeah. about getting that just because, like, um, girlfriend's parents were staying with us for a while before they were, they were planning to relocate to, like, Tennessee or some stuff. And, like, we got one nice TV in the living room, and that's all we had. I didn't want to bother them, but I wanted to play Xbox. And those, I heard about those, and I was like, man, I want to get one of those so I can have the glasses on and see the other phase. Everyone else sees the normal phase, and they can watch their thing. But I'll have the big headset on, and they'll have these weird glasses, <laughs> and I'll be over in the corner, like, laughing at myself and talking yeah. to people in the room. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't do that <laughs> with people. You see, that's a great idea. You never have to fight over the channel again. Everyone watches mm -hmm. their own channel. But I'd yeah. be like, Damn it, PJ! You know, he'd you know stick me with a stick of your nade or something, and they'd have to like, yeah. kick me to get me to shut up. <laughs> I'd have to stay quiet. We're trying to watch Schindler's List over here. <laughs> <I'm>... <laughs> don't, even, don't don't bring that movie up. Yeah, sore I, subject. 
So this, I, I hope this doesn't make me sound bad, but keep in mind this story takes place when I was like 16. That Don't movie was it. in the theaters. <laughs> and um, I, I was so bored out of mind in high school. Um, I was failing out of like our, our history class because the teacher was like 90 and just kind of drank all day. So for some extra credit, he made my best friend and, and I go to the movie. And I'm like, all right, sweet. Some easy extra credit. And, you know, I roughly knew what the movie was about and all that. But I oh, this I shouldn't be saying this. But uh, you get to the part in the movie where, like, you know, like it shows all the kids hiding and stuff. And, again, I was 16, but it shows those kids jumping into the outhouse. And mm-hmm. I, I laughed. And oh no! The theater was full of like older people that probably like lived through some of that, and like every single person in that theater like looked at me, and I felt su- like such an asshole. But it just kind of came out because <laughs> when you, when you <laughs> think about it, even though they probably oh. they you know we probably didn't live near any Holocaust survivors, but I'm being of the age where they knew that was going on when that stuff, and then yeah. being sitting there like you know just being like horrified, like oh my god, I remember hearing about this, and then there's a jackass. <laughs> I, he said, ah, this, like is, when the, this is wild when the credits went up like i would never ran so fast in my life like i was just fucking out of there <laughs> i felt like such a dick. shanked yeah with oh pass. my but, gosh yeah that's every time you hear that movie that that flashes back in my mind and i hate myself sorry <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> That's okay. never I, went, seriously. <laughs> I, I made the mistake of going to see straight out of Compton, like a block away from Compton. <laughs> and I felt like there was going to be a fight breaking out any minute in there. Because <laughs> they'd like rough. name a street or, or a neighborhood or something. And like half the people in the audience would be like, yeah, yeah. And they'd shout out the name of that street. And the other half would be like, what the hell are you talking about? And I'm like, I need to get out of here. I'm in the middle yeah. of like a conflict. Yeah. Dangerous. It was fun. That was interactive. <laughs> yeah. You really felt like you got stabbed. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, that's how you feel in L.A. at all times. It's uh, you're always only like a te- a one bad decision from being stabbed by a random guy on the street. It keeps it exciting. Speaking of L.A., we were talking to Skiva a little earlier, but you guys are both at a con with um, all kinds of awesome VR people. Um, how'd that oh, go? Oh, yeah. It was awesome. That was like the first convention I had gone to um, since starting my channel and doing all this. So it was really like nourishing. I needed that because like, you know, when you do like VR content, especially the kind of content I do where it's really sort of self-driven and a lot of it is just me. You know, you sort of forget that there's this whole community around you that you're now a part of. And so going there and being able to talk to people and a couple people like, oh, yeah, you know, I've seen your videos or like we've interacted on Twitter. It was just like this whole new layer to it immediately where I was like, oh, I keep forgetting that I'm like actually a part of this larger ecosystem of really awesome people. And like, you know, just hanging out, like kicking it with Skiva and Alex from uh, Between Realities was awesome. And, you know, we got to meet like a bunch of awesome creators there. Went to the AR house, which is a cool place. Yeah, I was was, was a little jealous. I'm like, oh, that would have been so fun. You guys look like you're having a blast. Um, we were Justin oh. and um, I think Johnny was there. They do a round table list every month and hang out. And yeah, I got to meet both of them. They were awesome. awesome. We were walking around the convention for a while. Nice. Yeah. Adam Bombody was there. She's been here a couple of times, but yeah, she's, a, oh, she's nice. a good time. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was <laughs> cool. Got to meet like a uh, Fia and throw thrill seeker was there, which was awesome. You know, they were all really cool people. VR with Jasmine, she was awesome. VR with Jasmine was sweet. Yeah, it's cool putting a face to it and being able to like, you know, because in VR, the cool thing that we were talking about when we were there was it was like immediately when we saw each other, we were just having like the same sort of conversations we have in VR. You know, it was like we had already hung out and, you know, yeah. knew each other and had this whole rapport in person because we basically did through like, you know, Neos and VR chat and, and all these other mediums. Yeah, it's pretty um, neat. Yeah, which I remember, like, you know, with my old gaming friends who I'd meet on Halo or whatever, sometimes you'd meet them in person and it would just be really weird. Yep. It's like, uh, <laughs> we only ever just did, like, voice chat in-game. 
Yeah. But the social aspect of this, you don't realize how connected you are to them until you meet them and you're like, oh, wow, you get a better yeah, sense we've already of... got this whole thing. Yeah, Wookiee and I have, I mean, we've been gamers all our life, but um, through Xbox Live, we made a lot of friends. And even on the Dreamcast uh, and Fantasy Star way, way back in the day, um, we had we had a friend that we played that with for years finally come like stay at our house for a week and that was a little awkward at first i'll give you that like yeah. but um yeah in vr like wookie and i are brothers and he lives down south i live up in you know wisconsin and especially with the pandemic we haven't visited each other for a while yeah but in vr like we'll watch movies and shit like it just feels like i'm in the room with my brother if you like it or not but you know um <laughs> yeah <laughs> same old business as usual it's on bitch <laughs> yeah see that's that's awesome i love stories like that you know or like long distance relationships like i have a friend who had for work had to move away from his girlfriend he's been with for years and like they'll have date nights in vr they'll have date nights at the comedy club where they'll come see me and we'll all connect awesome. like it's just yeah, stuff that you would never be able to do, you know, maybe more than once a year because of flights and stuff in the real world. Yeah. And even with our podcast, like before we were in Spatial Ape, we were doing audio only and it was fine. But we, you know, yeah, after one sure. show, we noticed how more dynamic and you get the hand gestures and you get eye contact mm -hmm. and developers can bring like characters or weapons from their games in and you can look at them and it's just, it's amazing. Yeah, see, that's oh, so nice. cool. I, I love that whole aspect of it. Like, it's making my, my dreams as a kid come true. Like, when I was developing for Half-Life 2, I would have never thought that, like, I'd be able to hold, you know, the models that I'm making and look at them up close and, like, you know, feel like I'm creating something that I can exist in, you know? Yeah, that's got to um, feel awesome. Yeah, like, when I first got VR, I was doing a lot of theater acting, and I just, for fun and unity, built myself like a virtual theater that looked like the real theater I performed in so I could practice my blocking and stuff, like on stage alone. Nice. And just like stuff like that is so interesting. <laughs> yeah, I've, um, it's wild. And, and, and before VR was a thing in my world, um, I have like three different scripts written for like stand-up i've always been like let's go do it go try it and you know this and that um i never did and uh i don't think i could use those scripts anymore because times have changed quite a bit so yeah. i've never done it but it feels like vr would be such a nice way to break into that kind of thing it is and i actually know some people who got their start at vr open mics who are now doing like in-person shows because you know they were afraid to take that first step of developing material live in front of people at like dive bars or whatever, but you can get in front of a bunch of avatars and try this stuff. And once they started getting laughs and things and realizing that people could connect to it, they were like, Oh, like, you know, now I know that this is the stuff that like can get a reaction and they take it in the real world with a little bit more confidence yeah. behind it. Yeah. That's awesome. And if you, if you're bombing it or get awkward or whatever, you can just take the headset off and, <laughs> There's Blame no it on technical difficulties. Pub, driving home, <laughs> then shitting your pants, and then taking a shower yeah. crying. You just go shit your pants and take a shower crying. <laughs> yeah, you get right into it. <laughs> you know, take out that whole commute. <laughs> or you can do it while you're in the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing it right now. I mean. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. You're recording in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Back to that Better point. Acoustics. Yuck. Um. When I when we first got into VR, um, I caught a couple live shows. Like I saw a Tenacious D play in Oculus, and I swear to it, like I go to a lot of um, I love music. I go to a lot of live shows when when it's available. I literally I, after that Tenacious D show, I was like I was feeling that dread because I live in Wisconsin. So any bigger shows, I I have to normally drive like two hours to go see stuff. So I was like the show ended, and I, that dread hit me. Like now I gotta fucking drive home, and I'm like shit wait and i just took the helmet or the mask off <laughs> i was like yep. oh my god <laughs> it was pretty epic it, the first time you feel that it's like amazing that, on one hand you 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 feel like you were there enough to have that trigger of like crap i gotta get out of here and walk to the yeah. counter and buy a t-shirt yeah <laughs> not there weird yeah and there's no weirder feeling than like doing a really good vr stand-up set and then just being like 
Oh, I'm alone in my room now. <laughs> but, yeah, like it's just, you're probably it's just, amped up with energy and everything after a good. Well, but yeah, exactly. You're like, all right, I'm ready to go. Let's go party, guys. Let's get out. Let's do the after party. And then you take your headset off. You're like, oh, I never left my couch. <laughs> <laughs> so do you just have, are there like uh, VR chat worlds where you can just go there and like break shit? Or like, do you play a game that like lets you get your aggression out or all your energy out after a show then? Oh, that's a good question. I feel like I usually go into Population 1 or Pavlov, and I just shoot people. Resp virtually. It's not an admission. <laughs> Sounds perfect. Sorry, I but yeah, I love, I love Pavlov VR gun back games. And you're shooting people. Yeah. Yeah, pa Pavlov's great. <laughs> It is. It's it's awesome. The way that they imported all the Counter Strike maps in there, like it just feels like going into Counter Strike and being inside yeah. of it. I saw oh, that no. video. You had a, a Pavlov video where you were playing the facility from Goldeneye, which okay, exactly. now when we first got into VR, got into Pavlov, we played facility for like hours because <laughs> we oh, loved yeah. Goldeneye so much. But yeah, that was a pretty fucking funny <laughs> video. <laughs> that one was Oh, funny. should I go first? Should I you know and then you go in there and eat. You're like, how do I reload my gun, guys? Like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. And every time I go back into Pavlov, I feel like I have to reteach myself how to do the basics of the game. <laughs> I did recently a, a Halo a Halo Pavlov video where I, there was one. I was on a team with a guy, and I was, he's like, "Okay, you got to defend us." I was like, "All right, how do I how do I reload the pistol?" And he just goes, "Yep, we're doomed." <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I remember. Um... I don't think it was in that level, but one of the, you know, levels that I like, picked up the light machine gun or chose it or just randomly got it in gun game or whatever. You just randomly get stuff. And I'm like shooting it all like this is great. And then I go to reload it and you just don't know how to fucking reload it <laughs> yep. <laughs> at all. I got into I got some trouble with the, um, the hot dogs, horseshoes and hand grenades community because I did not know how that game worked. And I did a video on it where sort of the point of my videos is like, I really do just jump in without ever playing it before. Like I start the recording when I start my first play session yep. to show people like sort of a comedic but authentic look at like, what's it like to just jump into this game without knowing anything about it and try to play around? Because I think that's how most people experience games, you know? Um, Sometimes that people shy away from games because they'd be like, I don't want to get into that. So, exactly. Yeah. And uh, but the hot dogs, horseshoes, and hands grenade community I've learned very passionate people. <laughs> they did not like that I didn't understand the game. <laughs> almost only really counts in horseshoes and hand grenades, but how does almost only count with hot dogs? That's the question. <laughs> Is it okay? <laughs> yeah, well, it was like the gun mechanics in that, which people swear, which seems too true to me that it has like the most realistic gun mechanics out of any of these like gun simulators but as a result i just could not for the life of me figure out how to reload some of these i, <laughs> I felt so stupid i was like am i doing this wrong <laughs> I put the thing in i pulled the thing back hmm. did, you you know, did you notice a lot of like um and there's nothing wrong with this anyone listening or watching but like those amped up gun enthusiast type peoples in that community more than Anything else? It definitely seems like that's more of, of the focus of that community is people who are really, really into like realism, realistic gun simulation who are just like gun people in real life, which is cool. I guess it just doesn't vibe with comedy as much. Yeah. I was going to say that, that crowd probably doesn't have the best sense either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like someone commented to like, as someone who's been playing this for four years, this was painful <laughs> for me. <laughs> so it probably would be. I haven't been playing it for four years. I've done 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> but usually people are really excited. Like, I'll even do VR chat videos where people who were in the video will come and be like, ah, I was in this. That's so cool. Like, stuff like that, which I really love seeing. Nice. Last time I was only... in something like that, I got my ass kicked on Call of Duty. And then that guy must have been a YouTuber. And this is way back. Because I got like a notification somehow that, hey, you're in this. I don't know. He must have sent messages to like everybody in the thing. It's like, hey, you're in this film. And I was like, what? So I kind of <laughs> went there. I thought it was a spam ad for at first. I'm like, look in. I'm like, oh, that seems familiar. Oh, hey, that is me. And then he's just like kicking my ass. And I was like, 
<laughs> you didn't have to send it yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah. <That's> not- <laughs> <laughs> or like I had a cool moment in Orbis VR like that where my Orbis VR video, which was one of my bigger videos in terms of like the views anyway, um, I just went in and like didn't know anything about it. Was just going up to people and asking them to like help me or just like having these weird interactions. And someone comments they're like, "Oh, one of the guys you interacted with was like so and so, like whatever his username was." They're like, "He's like the most famous." like competitive Orbis player now. And that was the day that he joined. And it was just this little interaction of me being like, oh, I'm new to this. What do I do? And he's like, I don't know. I'm new too. Hmm. And now people are finding it and being like, this, this guy's the best in the game now. <laughs> I didn't know there was competitive Orbis. We only played it a few times, but. Yeah. Yeah, there's like a small community, but they're really like, they're really dedicated to it. Yeah, it's weird. Um, the only, I don't know why, but uh, the only time I've seen like some uh, live comedy in VR is um, Rim Five Studio. They were doing some local stuff, bringing people in. They're from kind of my area, so I've I've visited their studio and things. But yeah, oh, it was cool. really really interesting because they had these. They weren't like VR enthusiasts, but they were comedians. And again, this was right when the pandemic hit, so they're like, well, "What else are we gonna do?" Um, yeah. So they had a set of like three people and it was really neat because they had like a 15 minute timer for each. And, um, <clears throat> that's cool. They had some neat emotes set up, um, that you could, that you could use without being obnoxious while they're, you know, doing their bit. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was a really, really neat experience. And I, I don't know if I just don't get reminded or see things because I'd like to see more of that stuff. So I'm definitely going to have to like, tag you and like make sure i see notifications and stuff like that because i really want to check it out oh absolutely yeah it's like a really small audience that even knows that it's happening right now which is why i think there's still so much room for growth for that kind of content because like 90 percent of the people i talk I, I tell about this even people who have been in the vr space for years i'll be like yeah i do vr stand-up shows and i'm like what i had no idea that existed <laughs> and it's just like getting people initially like um acclimated to the concept of it even you know yeah you know you load up um your quest and you see like all the content they're trying to get you to do and they see like the stand-ups and it's just like with a and it's fine it's nice if you find a funny person to watch or it's just live actually like live and they have like the little Mm -hmm. 3d camera there and they're you know, you can walk around behind them and the brick wall they have. There. <laughs> like, yeah, see, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's really neat. But I wish they'd put up, like, actual, like, in-VR stuff and kind of promote that more than that. And in my opinion, it works way better when, when you can see their avatar and they can see you and everybody's in the same room together and it's not that disconnected. Yeah. yeah it's just like, like um, the meta movie. I don't know if you've talk to those I'm guys. I'm excited or... for that actually. Yeah, I, I haven't met them, but it looks like a really cool project. Yeah. We I did no. the experience once and they were on the podcast, but like those actors, like you can do anything you want. And I was just the one time I was in there, I was just this little uh flying robot. You don't talk, mm-hmm. but you can like blink lights. So though they were freaking interacting with me, making shit up off of me blinking some lights. I'm like, Jesus Christ, this is awesome. <laughs> That's I think, so Steve, cool. You did that. You guys did that too, right? Yes. It was yeah. so good. It was one of the best things I've ever done in VR. I mean, it was like literally, yeah. I mean, you, you, the real actors and really good actors of that. And they will take the story any direction <laughs> um, that you want to take it. And yeah. The just main one of the most immersive things ever. I really need a message that was in there. Yeah. When I was watching or being in it, the main character guy, they were like, it's, it's a, you know, a protagonist, which you can't really tell if it's male or female by design, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a, they're wearing a mask and they're like, they brought up like a backstory, like, why are you wearing that mask anyway? And the guy just like, no one knew he was going to say this. And he just said space herpes and everyone, <laughs> lost it. they lost it, but then they, they, came back and like they, that was the whole story from then on and they they instantly like wove that into the story i was like wow that's insane yeah they must be really good improvers yeah they seem like it I, <clears throat> well how big of a group can you do it can we all do it at once because we, we so, still have to go 
I would so love that. They have two different tickets, and Skiva, correct me if I'm wrong, but mm-hmm. they have a main right now. They have one main character, the hero, and that's like a spe- like a different ticket. You pay more for that, like fifty bucks for um, that, and twenty five yep. for the. And then one. everyone else, which I think is like sixteen people or so, can be the little robots. And then mm-hmm. you know you you play a part in it as the robots, but the the hero does all the actual like acting with the actors. But there's three actors in the one I was in. Um, but they were, when they were on the podcast, they were talking about doing like a co-op with two hero type stories. Um, that's cool. Looking to get us in there. Yeah. And, they were like, well, you know, we'll be need to have two brothers in there. I'm like, okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah. But they're doing yeah, I need really to message well. them. Yeah. I'd love to do a video on that. That just seems like so much I, um, possibilities for comedy. So. I don't know if it's proper etiquette, but anytime I do anything new, I record it. I don't stream it, but I record it just for my own self. Mm-hmm. And then I'll ask, you know, hey, do you mind if I share this type of thing? Because, you know, it was a movie and I didn't want to, like, leak anything or whatever. But I yeah. recorded that. <clears throat> and I was, I'm was i in their Discord and they were talking about, you know, like a month later, like, remember that one dude said space herpes and something? And I, I, I clipped that out because I laughed my ass off. So, <laughs> so I took a five minute, little minute clip out of my video and I'm like, I'm like, you know, I hope you don't mind. I'll only share this here unless you tell me to do otherwise. But here's that moment. And they're like, holy fuck, that's awesome. Thank you. Because it was just perfect. So, that's you know. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely try, try it out. It's a good time. Yeah, I need to get in there ASAP. <laughs> I think they've won awards at a lot of the festivals they've shown it off and you know they a said lot that of, on Twitter recently too. Yeah. They they oh, yeah. won some uh, awards at the Rain Dance Film Festival. Two That's awards. That's huge. Yeah. Pretty awesome. That just shows the possibility for and like how much unexplored territory there is for entertainment. But like they're pretty much the first ones to do that and already people are trying it and being like this needs an award on like the biggest stage because this is just totally mind blowing. Yeah. Like, imagine when we're creating, like, immersive VR films or theater experiences, like, five years from now. Yeah. Like, it's it's, it's going to be crazy. The Jason, the guy over me, uh, the meta movie, took me into an experience this past week. I, I'm bad with names, so I always feel like an ass. But it was a music event where, and it was in Neos, and um, it was awesome. There was just a person playing keyboard and a person dancing. And like the music, like they're playing the live music themselves and, and yeah. acting. And I was like, this is freaking awesome. And there was, they had this huge cave with water and you could just run around in the space and listen and watch. It was just incredible. <laughs> that's so cool. I yeah. feel like full body VR dance shows, that's going to be a whole thing. Yeah. I need to get in. Like, on that. that would be kind of neat because, especially something like you're saying there, PJ, because. A few months back, maybe a year ago, girlfriend really likes that uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia show. And I guess one of the characters, his dad's in prison, and he comes out as gay to his dad by doing an interpretive dance. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> I'm sitting there, like, enthralled by the dance because he's dancing with a chick. And I love, like, it's like Sigur Ross or something. I had the, the like, randomly in my google play music library you know is like the song they're playing i love that freaking song so i'm sitting there rapture she thought i was just gonna sit there and think it's like you know with dumb you know like yep head kind of thing i'm just sitting there like this is fucking fantastic to see something like that in vr like oh I would, yeah i would watch that like twice you know yeah it, it was neat <clears throat> it was about um fungus oddly enough um, they're like scientists, the musicians, and it was, they had a whole chat afterwards, which was insane. But like their avatars were really intricate and like they would, they had different meshes. Maybe Skiva, you can explain it better, but they were like randomly changing color, like the, the fun guy on them and stuff. And like the whole space was just like transforming. Oh, wow. I was just like, damn. <laughs> mm-hmm. What you can awesome. do in there with, with avatars and, and the worlds are, is just so next level. So next yeah. level. Oh, yeah. I went into Neos for one of my videos where I just entered a world and there was this guy who was just like, do you want to see all of the things that my avatar can do? I was like, <laughs> yes, please show me. And like he hit a button and like an animatronic turret came out of his back and like was like auto aiming at people's avatars and could actually shoot. 
And he's like, oh, check it out. It has an extender. And then it like blasted forward and had like a twice as long like barrel, like all this crazy stuff that he had just built himself from scratch. He's like, yeah, look at all this cool stuff I just created for, for people to experience in here. The amount of like, work to put in that to get it to like auto target, you have to be, you know, you have to write scripts and things to be aware of an avatar and aim and, you know, vector point. That's not yeah. jump change. That's, that's impressive. Yeah, this guy clearly was like a full on developer. And, uh, around like Iron Man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. he literally was. He was like the furry Iron Man. <laughs> furry Iron Man? <laughs> because he was a furry. <laughs> That's awesome. It was, yeah, it was, it was like a furry avatar, but covered in like slick black armor. And I was like, this is sweet. I mean, this is just yeah. cool. He's <clears throat> figuring out a well, way to design his best life. Yeah. Frickin' when Skiva took us in, there's, I don't know where the fuck you got this thing, but he pulls out this little Mario 64 head. And I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> He's like, wait, it gets better. Cause I'm like, just having the head is pretty cool. Um, and in there you can resize everything. But for some reason, you throw the Mario head and he makes the, hi sound <laughs> like and then he comes back like a boomerang and you can like throw it and grab it and ride on it and come back with it like it was yeah, and that's awesome <laughs> you said There's that before and every time you say that to whoever i'm like i gotta go in there and see this shit because i like i can't even imagine what the hell you just said you know i showed you some really cool things that day and it's hilarious that that's the one that really stuck with you <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We were it's in like there, we showed like, you the know. future of technology, yeah. and you were into the flying Mario. <laughs> well, first you're, thing, you're going back to Mario sixty four, when you could be like, you know, move his nose around and yeah. shit. Oh yeah. <laughs> From like, well, right minutes. off the bat, when we got in there, Ski was he took us in his world, and he's like, just stand here, don't move, and he goes off behind a tree, and then all of a sudden, this big fucking like, I don't know, five hundred foot tall Godzilla comes around, and it's him, and he's like, <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. We were in there like three or four hours. Like you did show us a lot of shit, <laughs> but it was a blast. Yeah, man. That what we've learned oh. today is if you if you want to experience Neos, hit up Skiva. Hit me up. Show you the I cool am so stuff. serious. I will show you the cool stuff. I will tour you around and show you why that platform is absolutely amazing. Hit me up <laughs> at Skiva on Twitter. Definitely. Yes. <laughs> we need. We all need to go in the meta movie, and then we all need oh. to go. Take me a tour on Neos because I still need to know. <laughs> Let's one hundred percent do that soon. I'm up. <laughs> I would make time for that. <laughs> so That's do you wild. um I was gonna be a dick and be like, all right, so you're gonna do some stand up? I'm not gonna do that. But <laughs> say some jokes, joke man. Funny say something, man, huh? <laughs> make me laugh. Come on. Funny man. <laughs> <laughs> you man. Dance right for me. Yeah. <laughs> Just being uh, what's total that? ass hats. What's that movie with the Irish hitman Boondock, Boondock Saints? Saints. Yeah, oh, I yeah. just flash back to that scene with the Ron Jeremy <laughs> and the mob boss going like, tell me a joke, funny man. <laughs> yeah. Well, my, my opening line that I always do in VR in the alt space clubs, because it's sort of a blocky world for optimization's sake, is I'll come out and I'll be like, this is probably what a real comedy club looks like for someone with severe glaucoma. <laughs> It's like sort of shapes and colors. And I, I love your fucking avatar too with the hair and shit. Like it's just perfect. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I think it captures the vibe. Yeah. What does his avatar what do you have what does your avatar look like? like? I will say I gave my avatar better facial hair than I can grow. But that's why it's <laughs> virtual reality. <laughs> you know? It's hard to explain what it you'd have to just see it. It's pretty <laughs> Yeah. It, it's funny. I they uh, they, I made the avatar like ages ago and I'm like, I just, I feel like this is part of my identity now. Like I would feel weird having a different avatar there. I'd feel like I'm impersonating someone else. It's weird. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's crazy how your brain does that with VR stuff. Like with your avatar, like this is who I am in here. And you know, yeah, like people recognize me here. Like they, they won't know my username. They'll know what I look like, you know? Yeah. That's pretty crazy. I love it. <laughs> I love it. So what's <laughs> so what's one of the the craziest things you've come across in making either your videos or if it's in one of your stand ups or like just what's one of the weirdest moments you've had? 
I would definitely say, and it was one of my first videos I ever did in VR chat, where I met someone who's a VR chat escort. Fascinating stuff, where I just interviewed them for like an hour. And he was telling me all about like people, you know, who are not comfortable with their sexual identity in, in real life or something like that will basically hire these people in VR chat to like help them explore parts of themselves that they're not comfortable sharing with physical people. Yeah. And that was one of the most mind bending conversations I ever had. That's awesome. Um, that, and then of course the sex rooms that you occasionally accidentally end up in <laughs> accidentally in VR chat. <laughs> Again, like your video, I, well, I'll put a link to it in the show notes. Cause it's so fucking funny when you get in there, you're like, Oh, Oh, I, I shouldn't be nearby. And the person on top, turns around like looks at you and the guy sitting there is just like hey he just gives a little wave <laughs> so and i'm sitting funny. there watching these nude avatars i literally had to pixelate it for youtube to accept it <laughs> i'm just like hey guys what's going on you couldn't have scripted that and done that if you wanted to it was so perfect <laughs> yeah that was, I think that specifically was one of my favorite moments that I've captured, where it's just like, I'm like, this is what VR chat is. <laughs> That's awesome. Because <laughs> I was expecting them to be like, oh, get out. This is weird. But they're like, oh, hey, what's going on? And I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is now weird. For, I'm the one making this weird. Yeah. <laughs> Got room for one more. And you're like, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what I was afraid of, is he was just going to like go from a wave to being like, come, come. <laughs> Get closer. <laughs> Pat the bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I was one been time. In VR chat. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just gonna say there was one time, and I wish I was filming. I swear to God, it was the funniest thing that's ever happened. I went into a room, and that similar thing happened. But these people were like literally laying on the ground. Like you could tell, like one guy was laying on his apartment floor, and the other person was like in plank position or something. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> And I walked in, and at first I thought their avatars were just, like, glitched out, and I was a stick of butter. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> It was a virtual dojo, so I'm like, oh, cool, a dojo. And I, I walked over, and I'll just never forget. I'm like, this must be the most amazing image ever, is these two people having an intimate moment in VR chat and just a stick of butter, like, <laughs> standing, staring at them above them. Slowly come into the... The bottoms frame, like, oh. yeah, and the, and then the guy noticed me and he looked up and I was like, oh, uh, looks like you guys could use a stick of butter. I don't know. <laughs> you need some grease? <laughs> yes. It's like, yeah, you know, like, I'm here to supply the need. So was awesome. it like the photo real stick of butter? Because if you get the right metal shader on there, like the tin wrapper could look. Oh yeah, been funny. like super photo real butter, like it would have scared the hell out of me. <laughs> that would have been fantastic. Oh, I fell off the chair. No. Oh, me no. too. Right around the hour mark, things happen. So uh, yeah, that's when just... things start to fall through. <laughs> that's hilarious. We'll move up here to the floor. <laughs> oh, there's gum yeah. down here. Yeah, how did this get down? You guys got to get get this thing cleaned. Yeah. Yuck. Oh my god. <laughs> That's amazing. That's awesome. So reality yeah, is breaking down. I was gonna yeah, say I've only handle been in... the story. <laughs> I've only been in VR chat a handful of times and I found a cactus wearing underwear avatar I really like, but um <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It just BJ sent that in our like just random friends, like our real life friends <laughs> Discord. He's like, I love this guy. And I was like, what? the underwear on it is like so like meticulously detailed. Like there's this goofy, almost like a wacky waving, inflatable, arm flailing tube man looking, you know, Zelda That's Wind Waker. That's so good. Cactus. And then the underwear has got like all the little lines and shit. You know? But I mean, um, the amount was... of detail they put in there. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. But I was at um, Tech Man Jew's birthday party in VR chat. Um, oh, nice. And we had there was a, a friend of a friend was in there and he had this avatar where he was like three or four i don't remember if they were mongooses or what they were but it was like four three four or five of these little four-legged animals standing on each other's back and you I, I hopped up on top of him and was riding him and as he moved like this 
like I the stack of the animals was like going back and forth. So I was on top, like like it was a teetering tower of animals. And it was so fucking funny that <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it was so crazy. I'm like who who the fuck thinks this up? <laughs> brilliant, brilliant minds. Yeah. <laughs> I think VR yeah. chat has some of the most creative minds of our time. So I don't know. If, uh, I have to come up with something for when it happened in Neos and, and blow someone's mind with an avatar. <laughs> yeah, I'm honestly thinking about commissioning an avatar at this point <clears throat> and just having that be like my new VR chat look. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. But it'd have to be a stick of butter. <laughs> with a reel with a really good light shader. Yeah, know, but with like long hair on the top. <laughs> long buttery hair. <laughs> buttery hair. That'd I've be been awesome. told I have buttery hair. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's a problem. I'm looking into it. <laughs> is that is that a good or a bad thing? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, they seem to enjoy it. It provided lubrication. I don't know. <laughs> It's always well, at the crap. one hour mark that I start to get weird. Yeah. <laughs> and fall through the floor. Yeah, and fall <laughs> through the floor. <laughs> Falling through my seat, I'm so excited. Well, before we wrap up, is there anything uh, we you wanted to talk about that we didn't get to or anything like that? Or um, I think we hit it. Just, uh, yeah, you know, check out the, the YouTube channel of Scare Nerd VR if you want to. Um, I'm trying to make, you know some more unique um you know comedic vr content because i know that there's a lot of comedy gameplay out there which is why i try to really focus on the editing and the pacing and really coming at it from you know a comedic angle and how the gameplay can be enhanced the experience of watching the gameplay can be enhanced by creating comedic moments out of it so i hope if you're into that you check it out and if you're not don't or i guess do <laughs> dislike the videos it doesn't matter anymore <laughs> I agree with that because, like, I've seen some, you know, gameplay videos that are just, I don't remember. I'm sure that they're not memorable at all. But once in a while, there's, like, creative gameplay moments. And I remember watching something. I think it was one of the Hitman games. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the Hitman games. Some guy's playing it completely wrong because you're supposed to be stealthy and doing all this stuff. This guy's, like, I, I can't even remember what he was doing. But he's, like, you know, shooting, picking up maybe a, a fire extinguisher, shooting it. It goes off like a rocket launcher and hits a guy in the face. It's like, yep. <laughs> I didn't even know you could do any of this stuff in the game. I don't really play them that often, but, like, it was hilarious. And that's, like, when I hear a gameplay video, I think of that because the comedy made it way more enjoyable than, like, I love stealth games and sneaking around. Nobody, maybe people like to watch people do that and take, like, four hours to complete a mission. Watching somebody go through and be funny, you know, genuinely funny in it is. Kind of yeah, exactly. You don't really you know, just. Lot. Finding those like honest moments of humor and highlighting that and finding an interesting way to present it, I think. Because, um, you know, when it comes to gameplay, I've always just tried to think of like, what are the kind of channels that I like to watch and go back to? And that's just the kind of stuff I'm trying to create. But yeah, that's all I got. Thank you guys for having me. You know, this has been really awesome. I, I want to do, I want more people to start embracing this like style of, of production. Yeah, it's awesome. It's very it's much more dynamic than anything else, that's for sure. You can't fall through your chair in the real reality. <laughs> you can tip over. That's about all you got. <laughs> yeah. For now. I've exploded chairs before. Oh yeah. The last, time, <laughs> the last time it happened to me was during a one of our round tables. So there's like a couple devs in here and I fell into my chair, and they're like, what the hell are you doing, dude? You're, like, smelling your own fucking seat? Like, yeah, I was like, PJ, let's sniff in your chair. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I made it weird by sniffing their chairs, and yeah, and we were done. <laughs> you made it You made it normal again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to definitely catch your show. If you got one going on tomorrow, you'll probably see me there. <laughs> yeah, that'd be sweet. Tomorrow night at uh, 7 p.m. PST. I know a couple of the guys I met at the AR house said they're going to come by too, so there should be a good awesome. group of people in there. And that'll be in VR chat? Alt space. Alt Tomorrow's Alt space. Alt space. 
Gotcha, gotcha. Awesome. I don't know how to get in there, but I'll give it a shot. It's 10 p.m. my time, but that's not... not really yeah. Fun. Yeah, and it, it's a free app, um, which is nice. <laughs> cool. Is, is, is it easy to find once you get into alt space? Like, how Yeah, luckily... I... Once you get in, it should be on like the main events page. Like right when you look at the main thing, oh. it, it, it usually is on that first page. Failed to render comedy is the name of the event. Failed to render comedy. Awesome. All listeners and watchers, you heard it here. Check out the show. I don't know if you can see him or not, but I'm looking right into the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Can't see you. I'm invisible. We're looking for you. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Giva, for hanging out with us. And uh, Scared Nerd, thanks cool. for joining us. Yep. It was fun. Yeah, this is a great time. We got to do it again sometime. Yeah. Anyway, Maybe yeah. we'll try, like, uh, <laughs> uh, you can, Wookie and I will write a, a, a script and you can judge which one's better and we'll do a live. <laughs> I love it. I'm in. <laughs> <Write a> script. <laughs> It'll be terrible. You know but I'm in. It should be good. <laughs> <laughs> Anything we talked about, links will be in the show notes. So hopefully we can get you a link to Obscure Nerd Show and page and make it easier for you to check out. I love you all. <laughs>